Hey everyone, welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. I hope you guys are having a great day. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to upload a file to an S3 bucket using Node.js. So if you're a complete beginner or a beginner at Amazon and Node, I'm going to try to go at a slower pace to kind of walk you through how to do this and set up a bucket and permissions so that you can actually upload. So if you are new to Amazon and you have created an account already, you can go to the Amazon dashboard and we can go to the S3 service. So you can either type S3 up here in the dashboard and I happen to have a link of recently visited services here. So if I go to the S3 dashboard, this will allow us to configure something called S3 buckets. So if you're new to Amazon and you don't really know what S3 is, it's basically a place where you can store files and the capacity of the things you can store are kind of infinitely scaled, right? So you can just keep uploading files or images or whatever you want to that bucket. And then later on, you can have your web service process those or send them back to the users if they want to grab them in their browser or something. So the first thing we're going to do in this tutorial is let's create a bucket. So if you go to the S3 dashboard, you can click on the create bucket button here. And that'll present you a wizard where you can type in some configuration to generate that bucket. So here I'm going to specify the name of the bucket and this needs to be a unique name that no one else on Amazon has already claimed. So I like to prefix it with like WDJ for Web Dev Junkie and I'll say my uploads. And pick a region. You can just do US East 1 if you're familiar with how regions work. I'm not going to dive into that. Um, but I'm going to keep the configuration all defaulted. But you can actually change this up if you want people to download files from your bucket from the internet. Let's just go ahead and create this bucket. All right. So now that our bucket is created, we can actually start trying to upload files to it if we have the correct permissions set up. So I'm going to go ahead and just look at this bucket real quick and show you that it has no files in it. But the idea is we are going to upload a file to this bucket from a Node.js script. So let's go ahead and move over to VS Code and try to achieve that. So in VS Code, there is a little bit of setup that you have to do. The first thing I'm going to do is init a Node project with a package JSON so that we can install a dependency called um, AWS-SDK. Okay, so this is a library that you need to be able to connect to the S3 buckets in the various other Amazon resources that are available to you. So we got the package JSON created. We have that dependency that we can now use. And I hope that you understand how to use package JSON and how Node kind of works. But let's just go ahead and make a new file called index.js. And inside of this file, we are going to try to upload a separate file to that S3 bucket. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is you want to bring in that AWS SDK library. So I could just say const AWS is equal to require AWS SDK if I could type. And that will allow you to basically instantiate a new object, a new S3 object. So I could say const S3 is equal to new AWS.S3. So you can pass some additional configuration there if you want to hard code the region. But usually when you try to do this stuff in your terminal, it is going to just use whatever your default configuration is set to. So I think my default region is going to be East 1. But with that being said, we can try to upload a file to that bucket. So I can say s3.put object. That is one of the methods that are available. And you can actually go to the Amazon S3 SDK documents or documentation if you want to get more a uh, better understanding of how some of this stuff works. But let's just go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this and go to the docs. I'll type AWS SDK node and I'm going to type in that method and click on the first thing that shows up. So let's just go ahead and search for put object. And this is the function that we're trying to invoke basically. Now you'll notice here it takes a couple of parameters. Um, some of these are optional, but the main important ones are body, bucket, and key. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to our code here. I'm going to paste those in. And let's just go ahead and type in like an example file. So I'll say hello world would be some text that we want to store in the file. And the, the bucket name is going to be the bucket that we created in the previous part of this tutorial. So if I go back and grab this bucket, I can copy that bucket name inside of that bucket parameter. And then finally the key. So this is like what you want to name the file. So I'm just going to say my file.txt because we're just going to pretend like we're uploading a text file that has a body of hello world. But you can abstract this and upload whatever you want. You could do like an image if you wanted to and use the fs 
library on node to basically read in a image file and upload that to your bucket if you want to. So basically this method takes a callback, but I like to do promises. So in order to do a promise, you have to do dot promise on this. And then you can do promise chaining if you want, or if you are familiar with async await, what you can do is just wrap this in a self-executing function like so, and I'll put a wait in front of this. So now when I run this index.js script, it's going to basically put the object inside the bucket and wait. Let's try to run this. I don't think it's going to work because we haven't set up permissions yet, but if I type in node and type in the name of the file, it should try to do a put object request onto that bucket or into that bucket. And you'll see here we get a connection, a host unreachable or whatever this error means. So I'm pretty sure this is throwing an exception because we don't have permissions set up. So we can't reach the bucket to actually insert a file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to my Amazon dashboard and I'm going to show you another service that you can use to basically allow yourself to grant access to different resources. So I'm going to go and type IAM here and go to the IAM service dashboard. This is where in Amazon you can kind of create users and roles and policies to allow machines or users to access various resources in Amazon. Um, so what I'm going to do is go here and just do a user and I'm going to just add a new user for this tutorial and I'm going to delete it after I'm done. So I'm going to make a user called WDJ and I'm going to say programmatic access so that we can actually use this from the command line. And I am going to attach an existing policy and give it administrative access. Okay, so again, this is very, very insecure and unsafe. Make sure that if you are attaching administrator access, you delete this later on after you're done playing with it. If you accidentally commit these tokens to GitHub, anyone can do anything they want on your Amazon account and you will get charged a pretty penny if they spin up a thousand EC2 instances. Um, but I'm gonna do that for this tutorial and then delete that. So just keep clicking next. I believe it's going to give you a key. Okay, so over here we have an access key. I'm gonna go ahead and just put that in a file. And also we have a secret key. So these, again, I'm gonna clear up and delete after I'm done with this tutorial so no one can use these. But what you can do is you can actually export these to your terminal down here into environment variables. So I can say export AWS access key ID, and that's gonna be the first one. Okay, and then the other one, the secret access key, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and say export AWS secret secret access key, and I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. And now when we have those two things exported into our environment variables, if you don't know what environment variables are, they're basically variables you put onto your local operating system that Node and other processes can actually use. So by default, when you use the Amazon SDK, it's going to grab those two environment variables that we defined and give you permission to do things. So let's try running this again, and hopefully it'll actually upload a file. So we didn't see any errors print out like we did last time. So the best way we can verify this works is by going over to our dashboard of the bucket. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the refresh button here. So there you have it. You can see at the bottom we have myfile.txt. And if I were to click that, we can actually download it and view what's going on with this file. So I'm going to go ahead and download that. And I'm going to go ahead and open that. And I'm not really sure where I put that. So let's just go over here. And I can just drop it in to this. And there you have it. You have a text file that says hello world inside of it. And that is the same file that we uploaded from Node.js. So that is basically how you can upload files from Node to an S3 bucket. Let me give you a quick recap. We created the bucket with just the default permissions that Amazon gives you when you create buckets. We went and we created a user using the IAM service. And that user was basically allowed administrative access to do anything on our Amazon account. So that's why we we're able to do a put object request. But as you get more experienced, you probably want to hone down those permissions or policies to only allow certain actions on Amazon resources. We can kind of cover that in a later tutorial. And then finally, we wrote a node script to call the S3 put object method and pass in a 
a string of for the body and then also a key to basically describe the text file and which bucket we want to upload into. And by the way, so I'm just going to show you when I'm done with this user, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this user so that no one else can actually try to access using those keys. So I should be good on that front now. So if I try to run this again, we should get that same error now because now those keys have been deleted and they don't exist anymore. So that will secure my account. So if you liked watching this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Also, leave a comment below if you have any suggestions of what I should have covered in this tutorial. If there's something I missed or something I need to elaborate on, let me know. And then like always, subscribe to this channel if you're new because I'm going to be publishing a lot of videos like this in the future that should hopefully help you become a better web developer and a DevOps engineer.